Hi and welcome to this quick tech episode. My name is Philippe Ozil. I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. And in today's session, I'm going to tell you how you can configure and use the Salesforce APIs collection for Postman. And we'll be using the Postman desktop app. Note that there is also a similar video that explains how to do the same thing with the web UI of Postman. Now, the recommended installation option is to use the Postman desktop map, but if you can't or are not willing to install it, you can also use the web UI. And in that case, go ahead and check out the other video. In case you didn't know, Postman is a tool that lets you configure and execute API requests that are based on HTTP. So for example, SOAP or REST, and it can be configured and customized to work with any kind of APIs. Our collection, the Salesforce APIs collection, is a bundle containing more than 250 requests that are made for the Salesforce APIs. And we have tens of different APIs that we support, bulk, REST, SOAP, tooling, metadata, etc. And so I'm going to tell you how you can use this collection. So the adventure starts on the web browser. You need to navigate to the Postman uh, public workspace we've created. So that's postman.com slash salesforce dash developers. And this gives you the uh, team home space for a public workspace. And what you see here is among other things, the collection in here. Now clicking on it gives me the uh, public workspace, which is symbolized by this little globe icon here. Now I see the collection on the side here in my list of items and here I can already take a look at them, but they're all in, in uh, read only mode. What I can do next is clone the collection. Moving my cursor on top of the title here, I can view more actions and I can create a fork. So you can fork the, the collection. This creates a some sort of clone uh, that you have in your private environment. You'll need to name it. So think of it as a Git branch name. So I can just name it my fork. And I need to provide a target workspace that belongs to me. So I have a few workspaces. You may just end up having only one, for example, for the default workspace. And that's perfectly fine. You can select your default workspace. The default workspace is a private workspace that only you have access to, so it's not public. Once you're ready, you click for collection. This creates a copy of the official collection uh, in your private environment. And what's interesting by creating a fork is that it will keep a link to the main collection. So anytime there's an update, you'll be able to pull changes from that. And you can see here, this is now your default workspace. You are in your own environment and this is your fork of the collection. So now you have installed the collection. The next thing you need to do is to um, either work in the web app or on the desktop app. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can work on the desktop app. So I'm going to switch now to the desktop app. I'm now in the Postman desktop app, and uh, by the time I switched the window, my collection had already synchronized. If it doesn't happen to you, if, you, if the update is not showing up in the app, you can always click this little symbol here with the two round arrows. This will re sync the API requests ac across different devices and across the web UI. So we can see now here my collection here, as it was in the web UI, and let me show you how you can configure it. So I'm going to click on those three little dots there and I'm going to go and edit. By going and edit, I bring up the collection properties. I'm going to move to the authorization tab. Here you should see OAuth 2.0. That's the current auth we use by default. And everything is already pre-filled. Uh, there's already a client ID that matches to a Salesforce connected app. All you need to do is to click on get new access token button at the bottom here. This opens an authentication dialog for Salesforce. Now, I'm already logged in my org, so I don't have the username password login screen, but if you have to connect, you would have to enter those credentials, and then you get a second screen asking you for permissions to access uh, your, your org from the Salesforce APIs collection for Postman. This is a connected app that grants access to the APIs. So I'm going to click on Allow. This will close my uh, authentication dialog and bring me back into Postman. And there we go, we are now in Postman. So I have hidden the uh, credentials on purpose because the access token sensitive, this is what would grant you access to my org. Now, what you'll want to do here before closing this uh, model config configuration dialog is copy the instance URL at the bottom here. And you want to save it for later. Now you need to close the dialog by using the use token button here. It's, it's very important to do that. Now that you have done this, you want to go into the variables tab 
and you'll want to update the underscore endpoint variable. And so you want to update the current value and not the initial value of this table. Values in the current value column are only saved in your local environment. They're not synchronized back into the collection. If you share the collection later with anyone else, uh, if, and if you have values in the initial value column, uh, these values will be shared as well. If you keep all, of that, all sensitive values in the current value column, you're safe. They're only if you're in local environment. So now that I've pasted my endpoint value in the endpoint cell here, I'm going to click on update. And that's it. I'm authenticated and I can use the, the collection requests. So we're going to try something very simple for start. Uh, we're going to go in the rest folder here and we're going to look at the limits query. This shows the org limits. And the way this is built is that on top you have the configuration of the request here in this zone. And at the bottom we'll see the response that we get back from the server. The first thing we want to look at is the URL of the query. This is written here and it is using the collection variables like the endpoint we just defined earlier. It has other variables like version and we'll see other uh, settings that are defined as variables. The double curly brackets and a range shows you uh, the parts which are configurable. So this is a very simple query here, it doesn't have any parameters but sometimes you may see parameters in the query params or you can see also uh, a specific body in the body tab here with this, which is generally JSON. This one is very simple. What we need to do now that we're authenticated is just send it. So I'm just going to click on send here. And here we can see the response at the bottom. The first thing you want to check when you see a response is the status. And you want to look for a 200 OK status. And then you can look at the body and see if it's what you expect. So this is showing us the different limits for org. Let's take a look now at something a bit more uh, advanced. I'm going to take a second query here. Uh, I'm going to take a, a, a um, so-called query. So if I'm scrolling down here up to query, and this is showing up a request which has a query param. And the query param is a so-called query. And this, you can see that it's being added on top of the URL. So if you change the value here, it will update the query on top. I'm just going to leave it like this, and I can just send it, and it works out of the box. So this is selecting the names of my different accounts here. And you can see I also have a status 200 OK for my response. And I have my uh, JSON showing up the names of my different sample accounts on my developer edition org. All right, that's how the API works. Now, uh, there are way more advanced queries I can show you, for example, the composite graph API, which is one of the most complex. And in this case, there's no query param, but you can see parameters in the body and this is uh, a bit more advanced. So this is just a placeholder here. This won't work out of the box. You, you would have to write your whole uh, uh, body for the composite graph API. So always explore the different tabs. Uh, generally, it's between params and body, but you have to configure things. Sometimes also you have some parameters that you need to configure in the uh, URL of the request. So that's, uh, that's it for a short tour of the collection. Feel free to explore all the different options. Uh, again, the collection is open source. So if you want to contribute, you can simply make your changes in the collection directly here. And when you're ready to make your changes, go into view more actions and you can create a pull request. Check out the uh, collection documentation to see all the different steps that you have to take. To do that. Same thing, if you want to update the collection, you can click on Merge Changes and this will let you check for uh, changes in the remote collection. Here it's taking just a couple seconds. And you can see here this collection is up to date. It's normal, I just forked it, but if I had some changes in the main collection, I could pull in some updates like bug fixes or new APIs. One last thing I want to tell you is that if you're stuck with anything, uh, always check out the um, documentation. Uh, the documentation is available from, from here we'll, with a little arrow, you can view more and you have a link to the um, getting started uh, guide here. Also, you have a table with the reference with all the variables of the collection and of a few other things. This documentation link in getting started brings you back to GitHub. On GitHub, we have the installation instructions for deploying on the desktop app or on the web UI, plus some additional documentation. So telling you how you can keep your collection up to date by um, pulling some changes. If you want to also work with multiple orgs, how you can save some uh, credential information and toggle between the different orgs. And finally, how you can contribute to the collection. 
That's a wrap. We just saw how to configure and install the CSS APIs collection for Postman. Check out this link to get access to the collection and detailed instructions on how to configure it. And remember, the collection is open source, so we're welcoming any contributions you may have. Finally, if you like this video, let us know. And if you want to get new content similar to this pushed directly to you, hit subscribe and that bell to get notified when we release new videos. Thank you.